So people in this video, let us look at pure tone audiometry test. What is the spelling? Audiometry test, right? Pure tone audiometry test, PTA. It can also be called as PTA. Okay. So guys, where, where are we currently? We are looking at this ENT assessment of hearing. In ENT, the ear part, we are looking at the assessment of hearing, right? So basically, to assess the hearing, you have clinical tests, right? Where you have seen the Rene test, Weber test, etc. Then, in audiometric tests, you have the pure tone audiometry, okay? So this is what we are looking at now. What are the other types of audiometry? You have speech audiometry, B, K, C audiometry, impedance audiometry, etc. Okay, so this tympanometry, acoustic reflex measurements, all that comes under impedance audiometry. Today, what are we focused on? Pure tone audiometry. Apart from these tests, you already ha also have special hearing tests. Okay, special tests for hearing. Okay, so then what are we looking at today, guys? Pure tone audiometry. It is coming under audiometry test for assessment of hearing. Okay, so let's dive into it now. Pure tone audiometry. So basically, pure tone audiometry. So in this, you have to first know what an audiometer is. Okay. So what is an audiometer? So audiometer is an electronic device which produces pure tones. Pure tones means what? A sound with a sinusoidal waveform. That is what is a pure tone. Okay. Okay. So this audiometer produces pure tone. Okay. And you can change the intensity of these pure tones in 5 decibels. Okay. So, what does this audiometer do, guys? It is an electronic device which produces pure tones. The intensity of these pure tones can be increased or decreased in 5 decibel steps. Okay. So, what are the thresholds? Now, let us look at the thresholds here. So, basically, for air conduction, the thresholds are measured for tones of 125 hertz, 250 hertz, 500 hertz, 1000 hertz, 2000 hertz, 4000 hertz and 8000 hertz. Okay. So, for these tones, that is for these frequencies, for these tones, right, you are going to measure the threshold of air conduction, okay. For bone conduction, what will you use? For bone conduction, the, thresh, uh, the tones that we use are 250, 500, 1000, 2000 and 4000, only these, okay. These are used for bone conduction, okay. So, tone means here they are referring to frequency only, guys. So, they are saying a pure tone is a sinusoidal waveform sound, okay, with specific frequency. Okay, audiometer can produce these pure tones and the intensity can be changed in 5 decibel steps. Now, what is an audiogram? Audiogram is the graph, okay. So, this itself becomes an audiogram, correct? So, look at this guys. Normal is here where they have marked 0 to 10, right? Normal. Okay. So, hearing level. 0 to 10 decibels itself, if they hear, then of this frequency, they can hear 0 to 10, 0, uh, 500 hertz, they can hear within 10 decibels. That will be normal, okay? So, they have marked here something like this. What you can look at here? This graph actually shows from minus 10. So, 10 to 10, uh, 0 to 10 is somewhere here. Okay. So, this will be normal for us. So, hope you have understood this much guys. Normal audiogram you have understood. So, you can do for both bone conduction and air conduction. That also you have understood. You know what a audio meter is. You know what a pure tone is. Now, let us see other information. The amount of intensity that has to be raised above the normal level is a measure of the degree of hearing impairment. So, this guy, I have to raise it to 40 decibels, let's say, for him to hear it. Then he will have mild impairment, correct? So, normal, slight, mild, moderate, moderately severe, severe, profound. So, just note that there is a minus 10 also in this graph. So, this is actually normal, okay? So guys, have you understood that this graph can be plotted for both air conduction and bone conduction? So you can do for both air conduction and for bone conduction, you can draw the graph, okay? Normally guys, what happens is, normal will write here. See, normally air conduction is greater than 
bone conduction. Correct? This is normal. So, if air conduction is less, then it will be conductive deafness. However, normal is air conduction is more. This much you know. But how they will calibrate this audiometry is such that this audiometer is ca uh, calibrated in such a way that both for air and bone, there will be no gap. Okay, zero decibel gap. They will set it in such a way so they will get a straight line, right, for a normal person, right. So, they will calibrate it such that they will calibrate the audiometer such that the AB gap will be zero. So, they will get a straight line, okay. So, let us look at this. So, this is normal you have seen, okay. So, they will make sure that there is no AB gap. So, look at this. So, bone conduction, they are using some other marks. First, look at this. What kind of marks they are using in the meter? <clears throat> For right side, they are using circle and left side, they are using X mark. Can you see this, guys? Right side, right here, they are using circle. Left here, they are using X mark. Okay. So, here you can see that uh, there is kind of mild hearing loss, right? In the right ear. Very good. Shall we look at the second part of the graph? So, this graph where they have put the bone conduction information also. So, bone conduction, they are using what color and what sign. Look at this. For bone conduction, they are using for bone conduction, for right ear again, they are using red, but a triangle and square kind of a thing and left ear, they are using blue only still, triangle and square. So, they would have set it in such a way that air and bone should have no gap. Correct? So, they are kind of superimposing it here, you can see. Right? So, you can see here, right ear, some problem is there. Right? It has come down. But bone conduction seems to be fine. So, bone conduction is better than air conduction for the right ear. Okay? That's great. So, we started understanding how to read an audiogram. Right? So, <clears throat> What else uh, were we supposed to see here? Left ear seems to be fine in air conduction and bone conduction. What do you say, guys? One thing you should understand here, if the difference between the two ears is 40 decibels, okay, or about, here around 30 you can see, but if the difference is more than 40 <clears throat> in the air conduction thresholds, then the better ear should be masked to avoid getting a shadow curve from the non-test better ear. So, instead of, this is a better ear, so mask it so that you will not get any shadow curve because of this better ear, which is not being tested, okay. Then, masking is important in bone conduction. You can see here, only in bone conduction, they have put masking, right. Masking is essential in bone conduction. Masking, how will you do? By employing narrow band noise in the non-test ear. So, in the non-test ear, you will use a narrow band noise in the non-test ear. Hopefully, something you have understood, guys. So, guys, hope you have understood uh, this procedure also. Basically, this person will have to tell when he is able to hear and when he is not able to hear. Okay. It will be something like this, where they raise the right hand or the left hand. Nowadays, they have electronic equipment when the, where the patient itself presses buttons, etc. So, whether this person is raising the left hand or right hand, you will know which side they are hearing. You will know what input you have given, right? And what threshold, what, what um, decibels you have given on which side, that you will know, right? And all the masking also you will do by sending the noise on which side you will send the noise, etc. Guys, are you okay to move on to the uses of pure tone audiogram? Okay. So, it's a uses of the audiogram, out of the audiometry, right? Out of the audiogram, they are asking. Let's bring the graph here. Then. So, pure tone audiogram, they will ask the uses, right? So, let's tell them. So, it's a measure of the threshold of hearing by air and by bone conduction, and thus the degree and type of hearing loss. So, you're going to measure the threshold, right? We are going to measure the threshold of hearing by both air conduction and bone conduction. So, you will be able to tell the type of hearing loss and the degree of the hearing loss. So, what in all you are getting? Threshold of hearing by 
air and bone conduction both you are doing and you will be able to detect the degree and type of hearing loss a record can be kept for future reference this is a record for future reference it is essential for prescribing a hearing aid to find the degree of handicap for medico legal purpose also so for medico legal purpose and then to predict speech reception threshold okay so here you are only giving a sound you are not talking so you can also predict the speech reception threshold of the person okay so what when all this graph will help you in in medico legal importance it has where you can find the degree of handicap okay for medico legal purposes this can be a record for future right if they need and it can be useful for prescribing the hearing aid so i think we are done with pure tone audiogram for now so as an introduction i think this much is enough what do you say guys that's all for now bye bye guys let's say that a person wants to pretend that he cannot hear he wants to show deafness so what he will do he will not raise his hand at all so you need a lot of other tests guys so in the next video we will cover all that okay come for the other tests Thank you.